nominal and effective interest rates. Now, nominal interest rate is what the bank charges, they're charging us, or wherever you're getting your interest rate from. But really, the effective interest rate is what they're actually charging us. Okay, so we will need to work that to determine which one is the better rate. Now, depending on if they're telling us it's charged annually, weekly, monthly, this is how we convert them. So if we're charged monthly, we just divide it by 12 because they give it to us always per annum. If it's quarters, we divide by 4, fortnightly, 26 weeks, 52 days, 365 days. So example 1 says convert the nominal interest rate to compounding interest rates. Investment account will pay interest at the rate of 3.6% per annum, that's per year. Convert this interest rate to a monthly rate. Okay, well if it's 3.6% per annum and we want it monthly, we're going to divide by, well there's 12 months in a year. So divide this by 12, which means it gives us 0.3% per month. If part B, fortnightly rate, again still for 3.6% per annum, there are fortnightly, 26 fortnights in a year. And when we do this, we end up getting 0.138% per fortnight. And quarterly, well, again, 3.6% per annum, that's what they've told us. We want it for quarter, there's four quarters in a year, divide this by four, which means we're getting 0.9% per quarter. Effective interest rate. Now we can work out the effective interest rate using this whole rule. I'm going to show you the rule now and then I'm going to just show you how to do it on the calculator. It's 1 plus, because interest rate's being added, R is your rate, N is number of times in a year that interest is being added. Divide by 100 because of the percentage to the power of N minus 1 and then times by 100 to get it back to the percentage. Okay, book would like to borrow $20,000. She decide, is deciding between two loan options. Option A, 5.95% per annum compounding weekly, and option B, 6% per annum compounding quarterly. Calculate the effective interest rate for each investment. So we'll do option A over here. Option A, the effective interest rate, so the rate for the effective or equal, and I'll use the rule here. Okay, 1 plus so the rate is 5.95 divided by its compounding weekly, 52 weeks in a year, divided by the 100% to the power of 10, which is 52 weeks, minus 1. And then we're going to times it by 100%. And when we do this one, I'll write it on the side of 6.13%. Then we'll do option B. Now, option B, okay, option B, is the effective interest rate or equal. Again, I'm just going to use the rule 1 plus this time at 6% and it's compounding quarterly, so divide by 4, divided by 100, all to the power of 4, minus 1 times 100%. And the reason we're minusing 1 is because we're going to take away that original 100%. When we work this one out, we get 6.14%. Okay, so we've got our two effective interest rates. Part B says which investment option is the best and why. Remember, she is borrowing, so she wants the least interest rate possible. And the least one is 6.13. So option A is the best option because it has a smaller interest rate. So option A is the best option as group will pay less interest as effective interest rate is lower. And that's the one that she should go for. 